In this video, we're going to do some basic panel design with the Glowcraft controller. So I've been playing a little bit more with the Glowcraft controller, kind of get a better feel of it and, you know, share you guys what I find as I go along. As I said, I'm going to want to try to break this up into multiple video sections so that it doesn't have just one long video covering everything because the controller itself is pretty involved. So I want you guys to have an easy way to reference to whatever section of the controller that you're trying to work with. So hopefully it can answer any questions you might have a little bit faster that way. I decided to try to make things a little bit more simple. I would go ahead and create a square panel, just trying to keep things pretty simple. Once you understand the basics, it makes it easier to understand something more complex like an advanced taillight design. So I figure this is just the better way to start. So I have three separate panels here, and they are from BTF. Just got them off Amazon. They are 5 volt, and they are 44 LEDs across by 11 LEDs high for each panel totaling almost 1,500 LEDs total. Now, as I mentioned in some of our other videos, there is a limitation to the amount of addresses that you can have per channel of about 1,000. So in a case like this, you could do two panels to make one, but you would not be able to use all three. So this will be an interesting example of how to combine multiple panels. Now, to keep things simple, I have created three separate panels with three separate data connections to the Glowcraft controller so that we can show you how to combine all of those channels into one. Now I've preloaded a couple shows to give you guys an idea of what you can do when you get a panel like this. So as you can see I've got uh, a few different modes going uh, that benefit well from a large panel such as this and it does look pretty darn good in person. This is quite a few LEDs, so it does draw quite a bit of power. So I do actually have separate inverters for each one. Uh, the math showed that it was right at almost like 8 amps per panel and max draw. So just to be safe, I went ahead and did separate inverters for each panel and then the data to the Glowcraft controller. So in the show modes that I'm running right now, I'm not even touching even close to the amperage max out. But... Being this is going to be my test panel for just about everything from here on out for the basics uh, series, I did want to go ahead and make sure that this is beefy, built enough that it should be good. So you can see you got a few different show modes going there, and it gives you kind of a little bit of an idea just how uh, advanced it can be on that three-dimensional matrix design versus what we're used to with a Blue Ghost or SP controllers, where everything's a little bit more linear. So we're going to go back to our tablet here and go ahead and connect to your Wi-Fi. Uh, once again, remembering the password is current LA, all lowercase. And we're going to choose installers again. And the basic screen is going to pop up here. Um, we are going to jump right over to your data channels. And this is where you're going to be able to set up your uh, extra panels. Now you want to keep in mind uh, which data channel you are plugged into for each panel and the orientation of each and that way you can keep track of everything. So in the case of this controller, this is the one that I made for the taillights, so I'm not gonna delete data one and data two. Those are for the actual taillights uh, for the S2000, so that's why those are there. We're not gonna touch those. But what we are gonna do is data three, four, and five, and those are the three that I'm using for these panels. Now, uh, you do wanna make sure that you know your pixel type, your color order, and your pixel count as to how many are on there. Once again, 44 by 11, which means we have 484 pixels for each panel. Uh, these are a GRB color order and they are WS2812X based chipset. So I have went ahead and set up three, four, and five for that. And once you finish with that, go ahead and hit save in the top and we'll go ahead and jump over to our panels page. So on the panel side, we're gonna go ahead and add a panel and we can call this our large panel. You're going to set your dimensions. Uh, we are 44 across and we are 33 high because we are 11 for each panel, three panels next to each other. In total puts us at 33. Now we can go ahead and jump over to empty pixels. This would be where you would modify the panel itself in the event that it's not like a perfectly square panel. We'll touch base on that a little bit more in the future. For this case, we are doing a square panel. So we're gonna go ahead and jump to the next page here. Pixel data channel mapping. Now for this one, you will choose several different parameters to determine how to associate addresses to each pixel in your panel. So as you can see, we have created a 44 by 33 panel there. 
And if we come back up to the top, you can choose your data channel to start. So to start, we're gonna start with our data four. Uh, it just happens to be how I have data four, data five, and data three at the bottom. Uh, so my, my data channels are, but as long as I understand where they're plugged in, it won't be a problem. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and do data four at the top. And we're gonna start with zero which is my first address, first pixel within that grouping. And we are doing a horizontal serpentine, uh, which means that it starts at the top, it goes over, it comes down, it goes back over, comes down, goes back over. If you don't do that, then it just kind of like fills a row, 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 uh, and it doesn't ever actually come down and go over. So uh, keep that in mind, depending on what kind of panel you've designed or you're using. In most cases, when you get a pre-built panel like this, it is serpentine. Then you want to also make note of your starting point. So if this panel was upside down, maybe I wanted to flip it around, then the start point is right here. Well, that would end up being down here. So you just want to make note of the orientation of the panel, where your data starts, and then set that. That's in here in the fill starting axis. So I've got top and left, which is correct. So now we're going to go ahead and fill. As you can see, it is counting down under the next as to all 484 LEDs and has filled them in. Now next, we're gonna go ahead and grab our data channel five and we're gonna leave that at zero and we're gonna do fill from location this time. So if you do fill again, it'll just start from the top and then fill its way out. But if you do fill from location, you can scroll down and choose the next open block that has not been assigned yet. That'll be identified as a zero. So we go ahead and hit that and it will go ahead and assign that next group for uh, panel two. Now we're gonna go back up here to data channel three, which is our bottom panel. And once again, we're still horizontal serpentine and we're still starting at the top left. We do fill from location again, being careful to scroll down so we're not touching any of the already assigned panels and we're going to start right back down there at that zero point once again and this is going to go ahead and populate the remainder of that panel once that's it you can just make sure that all the panels are assigned a actual address making note that three is your data channel and then the number next to it is the pixel within that grouping and also keeping in mind that pixel one is pixel zero because the data itself does start at zero and work its way up from there. So just keep that in mind when you're looking at your addresses. So we're gonna go ahead and hit create panel at the bottom now. So now to say panel added, come right back to our home screen. And this is where you can test your panels if you want to. You go over here to your shows and we can go ahead and create a new show mode. So we'll go ahead and name it something like large panel show and we will choose our large panel uh, for this panel itself and we're going to add in a show mode you can do something like uh, we'll do RGB hypnotic uh, so we'll go ahead and add that one in there you'll hit save and then hit preview and it'll give you a sample of the panel that we've created as you can see it is quite bright now it's kind of a little bit of short mode but it's a good way to demo it and make sure you create the panel correctly and everything's working from there, you can play with the show modes a little bit, and that will be in another video. I'm not going to go too deep into this page uh, for this video, but it uh, gives you an idea. This one's short and sweet, not much to it, but it gives you an idea on the panels uh, for your rough design for this one. And we will dive in a little bit more on advanced panel creation at a later date. Uh, but I wanted to keep this one simple, short, and give you guys an idea of just uh, combining panels, creating a one large panel out of multiple panels, um, and give you guys a little bit of an idea of just how high of definition some of these panels can be. If you have one of our headliner kits installed in your car, this controller would be a really good one for that. Uh, that is something that I do have planned in the future, will be to replace the SP801E that I have in there right now with a controller like this that will give me a little bit more control over the actual three-dimensional panels. Uh, so that will be interesting. I'm sure I'll do a video on that when I do swap it out. But... Um, Hopefully this video helped you out a little bit more about the Glowcraft controller, gives you guys a better idea of what it can do, uh, at least when it comes to the panels. Um, if you did find this video helpful and you want to see some more in the future, definitely make sure to subscribe and like the video if you found it helpful. And as always, check out nextlevelneo.com for all of your LED lighting needs. Thanks.